last thing I want to say before we go off to David is you, you want to, no matter how intense a particular problem gets, and you're like, oh my God, I don't know, I'm so frustrated. Really, just take a deep breath. You know, it's sad that when we were growing up, we don't, nobody teaches us how to be a human uh, and how to regulate our body when external factors come in and how somebody's words could totally trip you out and you can take offense to it and it'll throw off your entire day. Those are, we're all terrible at that. So maybe this time in this 12 weeks, we can kind of get a little bit better at controlling, being in full control of your own mind and body, the state of your a state of you or whoever you are. Um, so this is the this is how we're going to go in this course. It's not going to be a traditional course that maybe some of you are used to in high school or college. We're a completely immersive course. You learn by doing. You could get too caught up on the why sometimes, but you're going to have to sacrifice your curiosity in some, some days because you're going to need to learn how to do as we're a technical school trying to get you a job. A lot of times the why will come to you. That's the nature of programming. The enough times you have to do something and it'll start clicking. So I'm a very curious person. So I get stuck in the why quite often and I will catch you when you do the same because I will nudge you and say, don't worry about that, why that crazy right now. First do this and then we'll get, we'll get to you. We'll, we'll, we'll answer your curiosity because I have it in me to answer that curiosity too. And of course, you know, if you ever have any questions, you can message me and have a chat. I'm more than happy to do that. All right, I'll pass it off to David. Cool. All right, everybody. Uh, so I'm David. Uh, Shazad gave you probably more wisdom than uh, I'm going to give you. Uh, but just a little uh, intro to me. Uh, I took SEI um, about, oh gosh, a year and a half ago now or so. Um, so I've been where you are now. Um, so I hope that you all can kind of see the value in that. Um, and I've kind of gone through and uh, I, along with uh, one of the previous instructors that we worked with, have kind of redone a lot of the course materials so uh, that you all have a really good experience in this class. Um, so uh, a little bit about me, though. Uh, I'm an open source contributor as well. Uh, I have a puppy who you will probably not see on screen too often because uh, he doesn't like hanging out with me. Unfortunately, he's, he's not bonded with me. He's bonded with my partner. So. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm also a dungeon master, so if any of you uh, play D and D, have that in common. Um, and I also uh, am going to be your uh, contact for all of your WSL and Linux-based issues because both uh, Hunter and Shazad are running Mac OS. They probably won't be able to help you as well as I can. Uh, so I am really looking forward to getting to know all of you. Uh, over the next 12 weeks and uh, make sure we have a really, really good time in this class. Uh, let me pass it off to Hunter. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Hunter Long. Um, I actually graduated from the SEI program as well, uh, not too long ago, actually mid-January. Um, I've been working as a TA for General Assembly since then and this will be my first cohort as an IA. Um, before that, I actually was a graphic designer for um, marketing firms, and I got so frustrated with uh, developers ruining my designs that I decided it was time to become a developer myself. Uh, so, so that's sort of how I got into this. Um, my time in boot camp was one of the most rewarding experiences in, in my entire life, and um, I just I really hope that you all get as much out of it as I did. Um, and I hope I can help you along that journey. Um, in terms of sort of words of wisdom or advice, I would just say, don't give up. Um, there are gonna be times where you're gonna get frustrated. Believe me, I was there not, not too long ago. Um, I, I've seen so many students enter this program with, with zero experience and they, they stuck with it and emerged with some of the most impressive final projects in their whole class. So um, just, just don't give up, believe in yourself and you, you can do this. Uh, moving on from there, 
Um, let's talk about communication first. Uh, so the best way to contact us is through Slack. Uh, that will be essentially our course hub, uh, our secondary course hub for this class is going to be Slack. Um, so uh, I know I sent you all like a welcome email and that kind of stuff this last week, but we won't be doing email or anything like that from now on. We'll be pretty much all in Slack is going to be all of our course communication. We don't really even use the Zoom chat uh, very much. So uh, that's really where we'll be contacting one another. Um, the That's going to be the best place to reach us. Uh, so we are going to be available from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in uh, Central Time. Essentially, that's class hours. Uh, you are more than welcome to message us outside of those hours, but you should just keep in mind that you are not necessarily going to get an immediate response during that time. Um, so just have that in your head uh, as we move on through the course. Uh, also, if you have anything related to attendance or an emergency, if any of that comes up, uh, definitely reach out to us as soon as you possibly can. Uh, just keep us in the loop as to what's happening, um, and we will hopefully be able to help you through that. Can I, I'm going to add something here, David. Uh, we really love over communication. So please over communicate with us uh, in terms of, you know, if you're going to be late, even if it's a few minutes, just send three of us of Slack. In, in, in Slack, you can click DM and pick all three of your instructors so that all of us know, and you can just uh, message us. You're gonna be late, you're not gonna show up. If you already know you're not gonna show up on, I don't know, June 17th, let us know as soon as possible. We're here to help you. And the more information we have about your state of mind and your, you know, what's going on with your life, the better we can help you. So just wanted to add that nudge communicate as much as possible um, as and and we're definitely here to accommodate all your communication if you do not communicate with us unfortunately policy wise like you're late you're gonna have to be marked late but you let us know we can make exceptions cool so um just some quick little overview of what to expect from SEI and also us. Uh, so you already know, like, this is a boot camp. So this course is intense, it's fast paced. Um, you will definitely be discouraged at points. You will definitely be frustrated at points. Um, so that makes it all more important for you to be able to celebrate any wins that you get along the way. Um, and also know that, you know, you're going through this with one another, um, the people in this cohort with you are also frustrated and discouraged at points. Um, lean on one another and uh, they can help you through that. Uh, and you know, you can also lean on us as well through those points. Um, for on our end, we will always make every possible stride to be fair and equitable to all of you. Um, so you will Definitely see that uh, reflected in uh, basically how we handle all of our interactions with all of you through this course. Um, that doesn't always necessarily, you know, being fair and equitable to everyone uh, means, you know, whenever you have a deadline, you kind of have a deadline. Um, everyone else has to fall in line with when things are due. So you have to also fall in line when things are due. Um, so as you move through this course, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, we, we're pretty flexible. We will absolutely work with you. Uh, if you have some event going on in your life that is preventing you from finishing things on time, whatever, um, always communicate that to us. Uh, but also just know that you know everyone else is, we're all in the same boat together. Uh, so whenever we make exceptions for one of you, we really had to make exceptions for all of you. Uh, so kind of in line with that. Uh, so just keep that in mind, you know, whenever you are, um, whenever you're coming to us for things. Uh, we also take your feedback seriously and we always want to be improving as we, uh, go through this course. So let's talk a little bit more about feedback. Um, we really want your 
feedback to us to be fearless. We're a uh, sounding board for your feedback, and we really want you to feel like you can come to us with any concerns that you have, uh, and that we aren't going to, you know, hold those against you or uh, change our behavior towards you based off that feedback. Um, so, I really like the phrase uh, "fearless feedback." Uh, so, whenever we're talking, uh, whenever you're giving feedback, we want you to be as clear with your feedback as possible. We want you to be using simple direct and brief language. We don't want like, we don't want to hear, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs worth of feedback. Um, at that point, we're kind of reaching a stage of being unproductive. Uh, and that's not really the kind of feedback that's going to be valuable to us. Um, it, like whenever you have feedback, make sure that it is um, essentially you're getting your point across uh, and you're not dwelling on one thing too long. Uh, also, Alex touched on this earlier, uh, we want all of your feedback to be timely. Uh, so we have weekly uh, feedback points for you uh, through the uh, through all of our different uh, tools that we give you uh, through the surveys. Uh, and also, you can feel free to message us directly uh, with your feedback as well on Slack anytime. Um, uh, whenever you do give feedback, that feedback should be actionable. We should be able to do something about it. Um, giving us feedback that we can't really do anything with doesn't help any of us. Um, and you can also give positive feedback as well, and we'll be sure to give that to you as you go through the course. Uh, feedback goes both ways. So um, I do want to touch on that there is a time and place for feedback. Um, if we're in like the middle of lecture, that's not going to be the best time or place to be able to do that. Uh, you kind of want to make sure that you're writing feedback. That's really the best possible uh, way that you can communicate with us is through Slack and writing uh, so that we are you know, able to, you, that gives you the chance to think through uh, what you're saying and be more considerate with your feedback. Uh, so that's really kind of our preferred feedback method, also in the uh, surveys as well, so. I'd like to add that part of the reason why we organize it this way is because this is how you will do it at your jobs too. Uh, your feedback will have to be written format. You need to articulate your concerns into words, you know, in a meaningful way. So take almost everything that is designed in this course is to get you to be job ready as well. So these aren't shackles we're putting on you rather this is also training, so keep that in mind. Definitely. Uh, all right, so now some tips and advice for success. Uh, you absolutely want to stay healthy through this course. Uh, so you need a regular sleep schedule, number one. Uh, sleep is so important, I can't stress that enough. Um, you don't wanna be staying up until three in the morning and then coming to class the next day. Uh, it's not going to work for you. Uh, also, you want to be exercising. Uh, staying fit is really important. It keeps your mind sharp. Just any kind of exercise that you can possibly get through this course, I, like I know it's hard, um, but getting away from a computer and doing something with your body is really important uh, and will keep you from getting into a really physically bad place uh, where you aren't able to sleep or things like that. Uh, also, you want to be eating as healthy as you possibly can. I know that there's like zero time for food prep or anything like that, but I uh, really hope that you aren't, um, you know, going out and, you know, eating junk food every night, hopefully. Uh, your brain only works when it has good fuel, so. That, that also goes with just if you're engaging in a whole lot of drinking, you come in hungover, I'm sorry, you might have wasted that day. Um, and the reason, again, we're saying eat healthy exercise is I can't tell you how quickly this time will go. 12 weeks will go like that. And if you find yourself missing a few days or struggling a few days because of your own choices, which is like eating unhealthy or not exercising, or drinking too much, you might have, uh, you know, some resentment <laughs> with yourself later, which we're also trying to avoid. So please take care of yourself no matter what happens in life, you have your one life and your one body, take care of it, especially through this course. 
and also just after this course. Yeah, definitely. Uh, again, we're going to touch on communication again because it's so important. Uh, as Shazad said earlier, it's almost impossible to over communicate with us. Uh, and you should absolutely be vocal in all of the surveys that you take. Uh, and also, this last point is very important, but we can't help you if we don't know there's a problem. Uh, so we, we, if you possibly can, always reach out to us as quickly as possible if you are aware of anything that's going to be preventing, preventing you from uh, completing a course task. Um, again, I'm going to go to this next slide, and we're going to say this one more time can't help you if we don't know that there's a problem. <laughs> Please communicate with us. Um, uh, I can't really make it any easier than that. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of coming to us with your problems uh, because we're the people that are going to be able to help you at the end of the day. So um, I, this is the only slide that is like this in this entire presentation because I can't possibly communicate to you enough how important it is for you to communicate with us as we go through this course. Um, some other tips for success, don't fall behind. You wanna set your goal at 100% completion. Um, even if you don't necessarily make that goal, it's that is like your North Star through this course is like, I want to have everything done. Uh, that way, if you don't have everything done, it's not going to be as big of a deal. Um, but whenever you put something off, it's going to pile up really, really quickly. Um, so I, I would just not do that to begin with. Uh, there is not time for you to procrastinate in this course. Uh, so if you're a procrastinator, lucky for you, you're not even going to get the chance to do that because there's simply not the time. It's not there. So uh, you also want to stay organized as we go through the course. Uh, make sure you have all of your local directories organized and also your GitHub as well. Uh, that makes moving into post course really easy. Um, yep. Also make sure you're using folders for bookmarks in Chrome so that everything there is staying organized as you're bookmarking things. Um, so as we are looking ahead, make sure that uh, you're checking up on the calendar pretty often. Uh, really, you want to be looking at it every day. It's going to have the next few days of materials listed. Um, really, realistically, it's going to have more than that. Uh, I know right now we have the full first unit and most of the second unit up there right now. Um, so you're you know, free to go through that calendar and see everything that we've got up there. Um, a really good piece of advice that I can give is every, pretty much every lecture that we do has a setup step, uh, and that is in the calendar event. Uh, so if you're at all uncomfortable with the command line, which we'll go through later on today, uh, if you know, you're having issues setting up folders and files, uh, I would urge you to go ahead and do that setup step the night before, uh, on all of our lectures. That way that you are coming into uh, the lecture and you're not you know, getting 15 minutes behind because you're going through that setup step uh, because you're unfamiliar with uh, how your terminal works or something like that. Uh, so again, if you're like feeling rusty on those things after we go through it later today, I would highly recommend just go a couple days in advance on the calendar, uh, look at the lectures, uh, check out that setup step. We'll show you all this here in a little bit. Uh, but you're going to want to complete that setup step ahead of time. Uh, you're going to get a good feel on how to read documentation as we go through this course. So you should uh, bookmark MDN uh, whenever we bring that up the first time tomorrow, I believe. Uh, and you're going to want to give feel for how to read that documentation now rather than later. Um, also, don't be afraid to Google around for solutions to your problems. Uh, you are going to want to search around for your errors that you get. I know Shazad is real big on this, uh, and I will be as we go through this course as well. Um, you know, you have this giant resource of you know humanity out there that there's someone who has had the same problem as you before, more than likely. So. If you're Googling around, you're going to hopefully find some answers to, your, to the problems you're having. Yes. Um, 
Yes, sorry to interrupt you, David. No, no, go ahead. I just want to say, I, most of the people out there in the industry today who have jobs as software engineers are really good at, you know, Google queries. Uh, they might not even have a full CS PhD. They don't understand CompSci in the way that, you know, somebody who goes to university does, but they have learned the art of using Google. And that's uh, not cheating. That's not uh, in any, that's actually just being resourceful. Uh, I think probably the most important thing in this course after being exposed to the material is going to learn how to be resourceful. So you're, you're gonna have some hand holding in the beginning of this course, but we will, very systematically uh, expect you to start searching for your own answers. And in the beginning, you'll know what the, what the hell to Google. You'll be like, I don't know what the hell this problem even is doing. This, you know, whatever JavaScript coding problem, but you're gonna learn. And a lot of times, and I'll tell you right now, you're gonna share your screen and type code in front of their whole classroom. And you're gonna also go open tab and Google. So clean up your desktops and, you know, you know, mute your notifications, start doing that as soon as possible, because all of you, every single one of you will actually be sharing your screen, getting up. Yes, it's uh, intimidating. It can get, you can get nervous. That is totally cool. That's why you're here to get those out. We are living in uh, the future, I guess, or present time, but we're living in a remote format quite often these days. Interviews have transitioned from like, hey, come over to our office and solve a problem on a whiteboard to, hey, get on Zoom, share your screen, here's a problem, let's talk through it. You're very lucky that this course is remote in that sense so that you get training. You know how to now become comfortable using Zoom. You need to know how to share your screen. You need to know how to use your code editor um, and Google. And interview, want the, anybody at the interview want to see what you Google as well. They're like, okay, yeah, whatever you're doing is being shared. And they're just noticing how you're doing it. So part of this course is going to be for you to get over your fear if you have one and to get comfortable using the internet, especially, you know, Google and learning how to pick up these, the, these answers. So I don't want anyone to be like, well, I got too scared. And so I'm going to, you know, turn my computer off now. Don't do that. You're going to be okay. Nobody's here to judge you. Everyone is actually going to learn. Even if you completely screw up at a, at a daily code challenge in the morning or something, it's actually super valuable for everybody else too. And the faster you fail, the sooner you'll have success in this course. So if anybody's afraid to fail, you're in the wrong place. You're gonna fail every day and it's gonna feel really good when you win, uh, you know, referring to David's earlier slide. So, all right, David, I'll stop talking. Very good. Uh, all right, cool. So moving on, uh, we also, touched on this a few times now, but there uh, is a YouTube playlist that has all of the lectures uh, recorded in it as we go through the course. Uh, definitely, I highly recommend watching it. Like if there's a topic that we went through on a lecture that you're like super confused about, I'd highly recommend going through those lectures, watching them a second time, being able to pause and rewind and hear things again uh, is really, really useful. Uh, so I would Keep that in your back pocket to use as a resource as well. Um, definitely utilize all of the resources that we provide you in this course. We give you so much stuff uh, over and above what we uh, what the core of the course content is. We give you extra things to do through level ups. We give you a lot of external media. We give you uh, videos and tutorials. Uh, ultimately, we're here to help through any, uh, you know, any of your resource needs. So if there is something that we are not giving you in the class, please let us know, because uh, we would love to fill in any gaps that we have, though I would say we don't really have a whole lot. But if you feel differently, we'd love to hear about it. So uh, this should be in bold and italics, but you should all help one another as we go through this course. Uh, I see that, um, who was this? Rose, I uh, wanted to make a discord for everyone already. That That's the best idea ever. Uh, you should absolutely hop on board with that uh, after she builds that. It's going to be so useful for you as you move through this course. So uh, help one another, you know, share in the struggle that you all will inevitably have as you go through this course, celebrate the wins that you have together. Um, 
Also, you are in the SEI engineering channel in Slack as well. You're absolutely going to want to use that as a resource. Um, that has essentially uh, all of the previous classes that uh, Shazad and I have run uh, in there for you to be able to view. Uh, so you could view all of the past issues that, what, like an, four cohorts now have had. Um, so anything in there is going to be super, super useful for you. Uh, also, whenever you all post actual problems in there, and we'll show you how to do that at some point uh, this week, uh, whenever you post stuff in there, feel free to jump in and help one another with those issues as well. Um, Ultimately, big message is stick together. Uh, we are going to be encouraging you to work together through labs and assignments all the time going through this course. You'll also have a uh, unit project, which you all do in unit three. Uh, those will be in groups. So uh, get to know the people around you. Uh, if you're not utilizing uh, the people resource around you as you go through this course, you're absolutely doing it wrong. So. Um, Let's see, also be able to know when you should be taking a break. Uh, you should absolutely be, be taking a break every hour or so. Just get up away from your computer, stop thinking about code for even five minutes. It's so helpful. Um, and managing your stress is also really helpful as well. Uh, knowing what it takes to get you through stressful moments personally is going to be a huge key as you go through this course. Um, also, part of that, don't forget to eat, sleep, and exercise. Uh, your brain cannot work without fuel. Uh, if you are, you know, running into a problem and it's 1 a.m. and you're, you know, you've been working at this problem for hours and hours and you're not getting anywhere and you're frustrated, go to bed. <laughs> That's like the best advice I can possibly give you. Uh, you'll wake up with a fresh brain and you will solve that problem in minutes. Uh, it's just how it works. Your brain needs that rest. It needs energy. So uh, yeah, that's the best advice I can give you whenever you're in that kind of situation. So um, also don't slack off on outcomes. Uh, you get out of outcomes what you put into outcomes. Uh, it is a vital resource for you to be able to get a job after this course. Uh, you want to start networking as soon as you possibly can with people that are in the industry. Uh, if there's events that are going on, you want to be sharing those with the class. Um, also, as you go through uh, the outcomes, that's probably the one place where you have even the ability to procrastinate in this class. I would not do that. Jump on that outcomes deliverables as soon as it's assigned to you. Um, I, yeah, that's going to be your best success, uh, your best path to success there. Uh, also, trust the process of outcomes. Um, if you know you are all here, you've probably have looked through our outcomes reporting that we uh, the General Assembly sends out. Uh, you, if you look through that, you'll see people that stick with outcomes post course end up getting jobs. So. Um, Last topic, I believe. Uh, any major OS updates we probably won't face a whole lot of those as we go through this course, I would guess. Uh, but make sure that you're not doing any major updates uh, to your OS as we move through this course. Uh, I do know that uh, Apple is probably announcing their new OS later on today. Don't jump on the beta for that or anything like that. Um, that would be bad. <laughs> Things will absolutely break on your machine. Uh, you'll have things that don't work. Um, yeah, don't jump on beta software, anything like that. You want to be running public releases of your OS, if at all possible. So um, I think with that, we've got some wrap up with holidays. We have one coming up on Friday, the uh, 18th, and also Monday, July 5th. So. Those are our two holidays in this course. We will not be meeting for class on those dates. Uh, also, just to quickly go through our units real quick. Uh, so there's four units in this course. Uh, our first one is pretty much HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, that is going to be our longest unit. Uh, it's going to be four weeks long. 
So um, we'll be that'll be our basically chance to give you all of the foundational knowledge that you need with JavaScript to move on to the rest of uh, the course, which is generally a little bit more exciting and fun. Uh, but we'll do some cool stuff in Unit One as well, uh, and you'll end up building a game as your unit project for that. Uh, as we move into Unit Two. We will be touching on Node, Express, Mongoose, and MongoDB. Uh, so we, with those uh, technologies, that's essentially going to be full stack applications uh, running on big, happy, fun servers, and also on a, uh, we'll have a client side with that as well. So uh, in Unit 3, we move on to uh, React, which is basically just throwing uh, react on everything you've been learning in unit two. Uh, and then in unit four, we'll be touching on Python, Postgres, and Django. So uh, I believe with that, we are done. Any questions from any of you at this point? Go ahead, John. I have a question. Just yeah. <laughs> Um, so I guess it's for David and Hunter. Um, as recent graduates of the program yourself, what was, I know uh, Hunter, you, you were a graphic designer before, but what was your level of experience with, with coding, like the stuff we're going to be learning in this course coming in as coming into the course for you guys? Yeah. Uh, so personally for me, I had kind of tinkered around with code off and on for probably most of my life, honestly. Um, I like this was more of a like, hey, I want to turn this into a career. Um, before this, I had done finance um, and day trading, stuff like that. Uh, so I wanted to kind of shift gears and, you know, actually make this into a career. Um, I had, you know, definitely dabbled around quite a bit before actually joining the course, but. Yeah. Um... Not very much experience from my end. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to sit down with developers at my old company um, and sort of get a sense of, of how things were put together. Um, and then I had a little bit of experience with WordPress. But um, in terms of hands-on experience, uh, virtually none. Um, so the, the program certainly works. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you guys so much for your answer. Of course. Any more questions? Um, earlier, you mentioned a calendar. Where do we find that calendar? I will go over that with you in the next lecture that we do. Perfect. I think Rosie has your hand up. Hi. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have a question about um, uh, 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 also another question about like you guys uh, as the teachers in particular. But um, out of curiosity, um, are you guys teaching other classes alongside this or do you teach like one class per like uh, one at a time essentially? Because I was just wondering like, um, like uh, do we need to be aware that you will be teaching other classes so you won't be as available to answer questions or anything like that, you know? Um, yeah, that's my question. Definitely. Uh, we are, this is the only class that we are teaching. I cannot possibly imagine teaching more than <laughs> one of these at a time. I would die. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, this is all that we do. <laughs> yeah, you, you all are our friends. This is a big family right here. Whoever's joined in. Yep. Thank you. Also, feel free to, like, there are so many of you and there's no possible way I can see all of you, like, raising hands and such. So feel free, whenever you have something, just come off of mute and just speak up. Um, I will, like, if you're raising your hand, I probably am not going to see it. So yes, thank you please. for that, again, though. <laughs> yeah, um, the Zoom etiquette would be, it would you know, the hands are, are, are good, but also, like David said, talk. Uh, but probably the most important etiquette on Zoom will be... Um, showing your face and we know everybody has bad days and you just let us know but teaching is uh, one of those things where seeing your face seeing the well either the aha moment or the really confused or frustrated look that uh, you may have helps us uh, get feedback because everyone's on mute and um, 
sometimes if I ask a question in the morning and everyone's a little, you know, just woke up, a lot of you will just keep quiet. Please don't do that. Talk because, because we're on a remote format, communication becomes so important. So part of that communication is the ability to show your face. And so we are actually able to see your expression, whether it's smiling or whatever it is. So please, um, that's gonna happen with the exception of today. Uh, going forward, if you haven't communicated to us about not showing, um, you know, being off camera, um, we will have to mark you, uh, you know, not present in the course. This is part of the policy. And, and I'm sure you understand why. Uh, just that that's because you could just turn your cam off, leave. Lectures are being recorded. You can be like, whatever, I'll just catch up later. The more you do that, the more you go into this, you know, dark, hole where you can't climb back out because uh, you'll always be playing catch up and that's just not healthy so please keep that in mind we don't want to repeat ourselves with that but please let us know if you cannot right and because we will assume you're not here uh, otherwise um does this apply even to just like briefly turning your camera off for like 30 seconds a minute or something and turning it back on or just you're saying keeping it off is the problem. No, yeah, those 30 seconds turn off, you need to pick your nose, totally understandable, turn it off. Like there's no, that's that's not why we're at all. But now if, if, if you've been gone for 10, 15 minutes and something important is being talked about, which happens a lot, that's, that's uh, you know, again, this is for your own benefit. So uh, if you need to turn it off because you got to go to run to the bathroom, you need to take some phone call, whatever it is, just uh, you can, you know, practice your adult common sense. Right. Oh. Uh, yeah. Right. And also, like, again, another thing we'll say is like sometimes people forget to turn their camera off. And then that's not cool either. Right. So things can happen. Now, again, we're not judging here. We're all going to be friends together and we're all going to, you know, cover up each other's flaws because that's what we do. But be mindful of those things. Sometimes you forget to mute and say something crazy. Um, and that's also going to be okay. We'll try to meet you if we see that. Well, we'll have your back, but be as mindful as you can on your Zoom etiquette. Again, this will only help you at your job because you don't want to have those nightmares at the job. You'd rather get them out of the way in this course if you've never used Zoom before. Uh, David and Shazad, you mentioned using Google a lot and finding answers to problems on Stack Overflow. Uh, curious if you'll be going over examples of like appropriate and inappropriate ways to handle that and citing code and, and all that. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's gonna be many of those moments throughout the course. Uh, for those, by the way, who don't like to read change that about you tonight, meditate, uh, because you're going to have to read a lot of documentation. And we're going to teach you how to read documentation, because some of it can be super dry and very boring. But you'll, you're, that's what's going to happen. You know, software engineering isn't like, hey, you read this, and or you study this course, and that's it. This I'm just going to keep doing this for the rest of my life over and over again. Actually, no, you'll get laid off pretty quickly. You need to le keep learning new technologies. Uh, to give you an example, you'll build an app for some company, right? You're building this cool app. Now, the users of that app were like, well, we really want to chat app, this app, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so now let's say you've never built a chat feature on an app before as a software engineer. You're going to go as that's part of your job. You're going to have to research how do I build this? What technologies exist already out there? How have people already done this? Then you're going to try and incorporate the stuff that you've learned and your research into your own application. So you're going to have to consistently keep researching uh, stuff. The best way to do that, like today, we're going to be doing installing. We're going to be installing a whole bunch of um, uh, tools and, and software into your machine. You're basically your development environment. And you're going to download something, let's say, I don't know, uh, MongoDB. You have no idea what the hell that is. Google it you'll see their main website. And then you still have no idea what the hell that they're saying on the main website. Google, MongoDB, Reddit. Maybe somebody else is talking about it and maybe they have opinions and maybe they, you look at that. So you're, a lot of it, this is going to be new uh, vocabulary. And I advise you to Google the heck out of every single thing that you're even slightly not sure what it means. Google it, see what it means. Wikipedia, see what other people are talking about it. 
don't form your opinions right now. Just be like, okay, not a lot of people like that particular technology for whatever reason. I don't know yet. I'm going to give it a shot. So open-minded, continue to Google everything the whole time. I promise you, you do that, you will be rock stars by the end of this course. You'll feel really confident because you're like, I don't know anything, which is the truth in our lives. Most of us don't know shit, but I know where I can find the answer. And that is beautiful. And I want everybody graduating from this course feeling like that. I have one more question. Um, so for David and Hunter, just again, did you guys, uh, was, was your guys' course the remote as well, given the time that you took it? Okay. I took it um, and we got through about three quarters of it uh, in person. And then we one day ran out of, a um, out of a WeWork office in panic because someone somewhere had COVID. So, <laughs> I yeah, I think that happened to a lot of people. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, Patty, I think you've got your hand up. I have a question. Yeah. Yep. Um. Is it going to be a problem if I type so slow? <laughs> um, I would absolutely work on that. Uh, that's keeping up with us is going to definitely be necessary. Um, we do have like we provide a lot of actual like code snippets for you. So you can like if you fall too bar far behind, you can always copy and paste that out of the lectures. Um, and also starting in unit two, we will um, we'll be syncing our code all together. Uh, so you will be able to push up to GitHub and you'll be able to pull that down to your machine as well as we move through stuff. Um, but I would like, despite all of that, I would work as hard as you possibly can on um, being able to touch type essentially. Um, Rose just sent something out in Zoom uh, chat that will be helpful to you. There's a lot of other resources out there as well. Um, I, I would highly recommend working on that skill, so. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, anybody else? That'll make you money, so please work on it, yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to transition us right into what we are doing next. Um, which is talking about Notion a little bit. So uh, let me get to what we're talking about and then I'll share my screen. Uh, no, no, you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Oh, sorry. Not? Oh, you're cool. Okay, so I am a two different devices, so you guys will see me in two different devices until I figure out how to work, uh, how to turn on the camera on my computer. But I'm in full screen. So camera is on my iPad. Cool. Like, so I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No, no, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah, and if you run up against a wall with that, just get with us and we can hopefully work through getting your camera working on your main machine. So, cool. All right. Moving on, we are going to be talking about Notion. So, um, all right. So, uh, we're just going to pretty much just breeze right through this. Um, so, if you do have questions or need me to like slow down, go ahead and uh, come off of mute and just ask your question, please. Um, all right, so you should all have access to Notion at this point. Uh, if you do not, please um, send me a message or reply to this thread in Slack. And we will work through that. Uh, yeah, just reply to uh, this thread that I just posted in Slack. Uh, all right, so 
I am going to move on and keep talking about this though. Uh, so even if you don't have access to Notion, please just pay attention for now and make sure you throw your name up in uh, that thread in Slack. All right, so uh, if this is your first time using Notion, you might wanna check out this What is Notion intro video. Um, you are free to go and view this on your own later. Uh, you're not going to be using any editing throughout this course. Uh, so just as a heads up to that, uh, you are free to go and make your own Notion workspace and uh, use that, keep notes there. I highly recommend that. That's how I kept notes in the class, um, of which I will probably periodically link out to all of you uh, as you need them. Um, it might be uh, helpful for you to at least kind of familiarize yourself with uh, the tools available within Notion though, such as the search tools and stuff like that. Uh, so that you're able to effectively use Notion in its full capacity. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is our course hub. So that is this right here. Uh, this is going to be a hub for all of the content through the course. Uh, so you're going to uh, have all the deliverables that have been assigned and have upcoming uh, due dates, such as the one that we're assigning this afternoon, the Dev Environment Lab. Um, you'll also see that you have the course materials here, and then any additional resources uh, are going to be over here on this right side. So, uh, moving on from that, the calendar is here. This is essentially going to be your day-to-day, -day, uh, what's happening in the class today. Uh, I'm going to take this full screen just so we get a better view. Uh, so you'll see in here, you can see the entire, uh, this entire unit is in here right now. Um, so you can see up through week four. Uh, and you can pretty much see what we're doing throughout every single day, uh, all of the activities that we've got going on. So um, there are a couple more views in here, such as like the today view. That's going to focus in and narrow down to just what is happening today. Um, we've also got the deliverable calendar in here as well. This only shows things that are deliverable and when they're due. So uh, if you ever like, hey, what's coming up? What do I have due in the future? That's what this view is for, the deliverable calendar. And then we've got over here the this week that narrows everything down to just what is going on in the course this week. Uh, so you can access those different views in this little drop down under here, right under where it says calendar. So uh, make sure you're scrolled all the way up because you see that that does go away if you scroll down. So that does show up at the top here. Um, in the calendar, you'll see uh, if I go into a lecture, uh, let's look at Shazad's tomorrow. So in here, uh, this is a lecture event. Uh, there's a few different things that you can see right off the bat and whenever we look at this. You've got your learning objectives. That's essentially like big picture, whoa, what am I getting out of this uh, topic that we're talking about as part of this lecture? Uh, so this is like real big high level overview. This is what we're talking about. This is what you should walk away uh, from this lecture. Uh, then we've got setup and uh, this will have all the setup steps that you need to complete to be able to move on to the actual lecture content itself. And then we've got uh, the topics that are going to be covered. So you can click out to those that links directly to uh, the actual lecture content. Uh, in this lecture content, you can see up top, we've got contents. Uh, this is, you can click on any of these in here and that will take you directly to, hey, variables right there. Uh, you don't have to like search through this. You don't have to like, you know, do a whole lot of like investigation. It just takes you right here. You don't have to think about it, super easy. Um, let's see, I'm probably skipping over stuff as I'm moving through this. Uh, I would say, as you can see with today, we are um, a tiny bit behind in our calendar. Uh, so you should know that the calendar is not going to be set in stone law. Uh, we Things will move around. That's just how this naturally goes. Uh, we're going to have to, you know, have some flexibility and be okay with, you know, things being moved from morning to afternoon to be switched days sometimes. 
Uh, we really want to be responsive to what you all need at a given moment. So things are going to move. That's just how it is. This is a you know very. Um, this is pretty much how long we think something's going to take. Um, if we go over, if we go under, that's cool. We flow with it. Uh, so, uh, but this should you know give you a kind of uh, overview of what we've got going on. Uh, we will always try our very, very best to respect your lunchtime. Um, so whenever you see lunch on here at noon, we will do everything in our power to make sure that you take lunch at noon. Uh, we might go five minutes over occasionally, uh, but we will absolutely try to keep that to a minimum. Um, I showed you a lecture event already. Um, you will see in here that there are uh, these level up contents as well. Uh, so these are uh, also included in your lectures, uh, but essentially these are optional uh, things for you to go and explore on your own if you feel like you're a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, these are not going to be required of you. We aren't going to go and necessarily like ask you about them later, um, but you, it, you will benefit by you know, going through and doing these level activities though. Um, so if you, you know, if you feel at all the capacity, the mental capacity to be able to take on these things in here, I would do that. Uh, but also if you need a break on a day, don't feel bad about skipping over some of these. Um, yeah, so. Um, moving right along with this, are there any questions on anything I've talked about so far? I know I'm kind of like moving at sort of a breakneck speed here, but um, all right. Um. Hey, yeah, I was trying to figure out how you got to the level up and the calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if uh, on these calendar events, if you just uh, hover over it and then click it here, it should pop up on a little uh, modal screen kind of like this. Okay, I'm trying to get to the calendar in the first place then. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, so if you're on the course hub here, uh, the calendar is just going to be this link under resources. Okay, is the course hub like in the in the slack app uh it should be within the notion app um if okay you uh or if you're using uh linux it'll be on their web app as well um, okay if you don't have access to this in notion let me um get with you later and we will sort of okay getting you notion uh, hi david can i ask a real quick question totally um, so do you know of any way to get the time zones to show like wherever our time zone is, or will it always be CDT based on like how Notion was input? The time zone should display in your current local time zone. So the <laughs> times in here should reflect essentially, um, they should automatically change depending on your time zone. Do you have oh, Okay. I'll have to look and see if my computer's maybe set up weird or something. Cause it's okay, nice. cool. Okay. Thanks. Interesting. Yeah, let me know how that goes. And if you end up having problems with it, just okay, thanks. Us. Yep, totally. All right. Um, next, we've got our uh, lectures and code alongs. Um, this is going to be the bulk of the uh, course content is going to be these lectures. Uh, so within that, um, just some general information on how things look. Uh, file names and file paths are always going to be colored in orange like this. So if you see orange text, you know that that is a file name or a file path. Uh, we've got keyboard shortcuts that are colored pink, just like this. Uh, so if you see P text, you know that that is a keyboard shortcut. Uh, whenever you see a keyboard shortcut, you don't enter the plus. That's just whenever you see this. Uh, so like command plus shift plus three just means you hold the command key, the shift key, and the three key simultaneously. You don't press down on like the plus key. Um, any links to within the Notion workspace are going to look exactly like this. Uh, external links will be colored blue and uh, they have the or blue text. Uh, we also have code blocks. Uh, you can see here, this one uh, is language labeled. Uh, so like where you have bash here, that means that that is something that you're going to input onto a terminal. Uh, you might see JavaScript here. You might see uh, Python. You might see HTML. 
Uh, this little, uh, whenever you hover over this code block, the language that appears here, that is the language of uh, whatever text is in that code block. Um, we uh, do not use the dollar sign symbol to indicate a bash command. Uh, you will see that all the time across the internet, um, but we do not use that within these code blocks. Uh, if what I said just went entirely over your head, don't worry about it too much for now. Um, we will be talking about terminal and bash uh, here uh, after lunch. Um, let's see. Uh, lastly, this is going to be a call out. Um, you could see here all of the different things that a call out might uh, give you information about. Uh, the most important one that you're going to want to really pay attention to is the siren one. Uh, so that's going to be something that is not used very often. So whenever it is used, please pay attention to it uh, because if you aren't paying attention to it and you do something wrong uh, there, something is going to uh, break essentially. So whenever you see one of these sirens, uh, like eyes up, fully awake, you know, pay huge attention. Um, also, this little caution symbol is going to be something that might go wrong. I would highly pay attention to those too. Really, all of these callouts are super important stuff that we want to call out specifically, uh, but absolutely like critical, like, oh my gosh, please pay attention, this stuff right here. Um, that is Notion. Does anyone have any questions about any of this? Perfect. Um, with that... Uh, sorry, I have a question. Oh, yeah. I was you're trying good. to unmute. Um, yeah. so, um, I, you said you're writing Linux, um, and when I look, went to the Notion page, it says there's not, like, an official version for Linux. Yep. Um, so I, I noticed you're using like a, a an app, not like the website. Yep. Um, so where, like, I, I know it, it might take a little bit of explaining, like, but like for resources for Linux users can somewhere maybe like in the Slack app or something, could you explain like how to get that for Linux? Yeah, so on Linux, uh, you should be able to go to, and a, a of you should be able to do this. Uh, you should be able to, even if you're not running Linux, go to, if I can find my cursor. Um, I did notice there's something called Lotion. Is that what you're using? Uh, so if you just go to Notion's website, this notion.so, and then you log in here, uh, you should also have full access to the course content here. Um, so you'll see in this space, um, we've got the uh, same, uh, essentially looks exactly the same. This is just their web interface instead. So um, you should absolutely have access to all the same materials if you're running Linux uh, than anyone running macOS or Windows. It will just happen within the browser instead. Um, my question was more so like, um, I, I can access it through the website, but I saw you're using an app um, what app are you using? So I know I can, I can download that as well. Uh, so I'm running personally WSL. Um, mm -hmm. So I have Windows essentially. So I'm just using oh. the Notion app. I like the web interface is perfectly fine. Um, I wouldn't necessarily worry about getting an app per se. Um, you totally can if you want to explore that. Uh, but like the web interface does everything that the app itself does. So. Good question, though. Uh, any other questions? Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to give you all a quick little break, and then we are going to split up into breakout rooms dependent on your operating system. Um, and we are just going to do a quick little broad assessment of where everyone is in Stallfest. Um, we probably aren't necessarily going to be doing a lot of troubleshooting uh, at this time, but I just kind of want to get a feel for where everyone is with their Stallfest so that uh, people that need help before they can move on and 
get to bigger and better places are able to get help. Um, so let's all take a five minute break. Uh, before you leave though, um, uh, I'm going to make a post in Slack. Uh, so if you can all click the uh, emoji that corresponds to your OS in the um, Slack post I just made, and there's going to be Windows people, there's going to be Apple people, and there's going to be Linux people. So just click on whichever one of those. Uh, is you. After that, please go on your break. You've got four minutes. So uh, we will only keep you for a little bit after that.
All right, everybody. I'm in the process of making breakout rooms for all of you. Uh, so we'll have all of our macOS people in one room and everyone else will be in another room with me. Um, so I'm going to break you out here in a second and we'll see you in your rooms. Hello, hello, my lovely hey. Windows and Linux people. Hello. I got to say, I was so excited when I was on the slideshow when I, uh, you said you were a Windows guy. I was yeah. Oh, yeah. Very thankful. <laughs> and you know yeah. Linux too, right? Yeah, yeah. M yeah. Most of like actual like the Windows installation is really just getting Linux running on Windows. So oh, therefore, yeah. I know Linux by proxy. So, okay. <laughs> and I, if we ever run anything that's like super Linuxy that I'm like kind of running up into a wall with, I have a couple contacts that I can reach okay. out to and get us help for. So I'm yeah. not just like, I'm not anticipating we're going to have any big problems though. Yeah. And I have uh, a few friends um, who also run Linux and one of them like really smart with Linux. So Perfect. I can always contact them if I need that's help. That's great. Um, yeah. uh, so I just want to really just check in and see where the three of you are uh, with your install fest. Um, I like, I know that there's a lot of content in all of that. So like, if you're not complete with it, that's fine. Um, but I do want to just make sure that you've got a, um, I do want to make sure that we've got everything at least at a baseline for all of you sort of, and we're yeah. on a good track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so should I start? Um, I guess. Um, yeah, go ahead, uh, Rose. Just I yeah, just really um, want to know where you are at with yeah. the process. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, so with the install fest, I did all of it. Um, the and only thing that I have concerns about. Um, oh, I should say I'm running Ubuntu uh, distribution pop OS. Okay. Cool. Um, so I. I like I said, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure how in depth you know about Linux. Um, I mean, like I, I, I'm, I've had this distribution on my computer for a while, but I recently like set it all up to run as my main operating system. Okay. Um, the only concern I have is that um, uh, I did all the things correctly. Some things I had a little, do a little work around. Um, I forget which one, but I got it working. I, I got it, um, I forget what it was. I think it was with the ZSH because I use uh, uh, the terminal Twilix, um, okay. uh, but it, it it's working fine. Like all it does is like make it so I can have tabs of like extra tabs split on my screen of the terminal. Um, anyways, my only concern is that uh, when I do the Python, or when I launch the terminal, it gives no matter what app I use, it has a warning pi environment or pi env um, in it dash. Do you mean to just share my screen? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Why not? Um, here we go. Uh, where is it? Is this one? Actually, let me hold on. Let me put it on here. Yeah, that works. Um, uh, it's awesome. Um, share. Do you see this? Okay. Interesting. Um, I will take a screenshot of this and get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it. Um, from what I've searched, um, it looks like um, I have a couple things um, that I've noticed. Um, what I think, let me go to the install fast. 
real quick because I don't know what the difference or what differences there are in the Windows install files because I didn't like check it out. Yeah. But um, it has to do with um, if you look under Python three, it's Py environment dash dash version. Like all that is fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can do uh Py uh, Py environment version, and it gets that. Um. And let's see. Um, so everything's working fine. It just looks like when I add the default, where was it? I'm trying to look for it. Um, so essentially, finalize the installation. Here we go. Finalize the installation by adding Py environment to your plugins in your ZSHRC file, which um, I did. Um, but there's something in one of these steps that adds something to the file that it looks like this is throwing the error essentially. Like it's, it looks like it's functional, but it's saying that um, like, cause see it says pi environment in it. And then it says here that I have to add these to the different config files which I didn't want to do exactly because there were certain things that people put in place like in these instructions on like do this with this config file which kind of uh what's it called um it doesn't exactly line up with what this uh terminal is saying I, I I'm pointing to it but you can't actually see it <laughs> there you go. um but okay yeah I I'm not really too concerned about this because we yeah. don't even touch Python for another okay. 10 weeks. So um, if you want to take a I'll, I'll look into I it though. Yeah, oh, I already did. So you're good. Yeah, did you take a screenshot of this message? Cause I feel yes. like whoever, okay, awesome, yep. perfect. Yep, yep, you're good. Awesome, I'll stop um, Okay, cool. Um, let's see, Mike, Andrew, Tosin, uh, welcome. So um, we're kind of just assessing where everyone's at with the install fest right now. Um, so that's kind of all that we're really doing. I want to make sure everyone's kind of at a baseline position, but once we're there, it's like everything past that we will be doing, uh, really not until unit two. So I'm not too worried about it, but anyway, Mike, Andrew, where are you at? Um, I'll go ahead. Um, so admittedly, I started going through the install fest and that I saw in your email, I was like, well, don't freak out about it. And I got to the point where I'm probably going to have to uh, change some stuff in my BIOS, which uh, I have done before, but, uh, you know, just with like changing some RAM, you know, output and all that. Okay. Um, okay. But so, yeah, I downloaded, I followed it top to bottom. I got to downloading Ubuntu off the Microsoft store and I'm getting an error that says the virtual machine could not be started because of a, uh, required feature and I'm assuming that's turning on virtualization in my BIOS. Yep. Um, okay. So I just, bef yeah, I'm sorry. You can go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you're good. If you've messed with like Ram stuff in your BIOS before, I'm not too concerned about you finding the correct setting. Um, okay. So uh, you'll be fine. Uh, it's somewhere in your BIOS. It's under the processor features. Um, so just poke around. There will be something. Are you doing AMD? uh no or Intel. Intel. okay cool uh so somewhere in there there will be um a um sorry somewhere in there there will be something related to uh intel virtualization so cool yep just look for that sweet and then i don't want to take too long but um so i don't have i had installed git before Okay. But um, I uninstalled it because I wasn't sure if I installed it correctly, okay. uh, if there was like certain procedures I needed to do because I just went top to bottom trying to make it yep. as yeah, simple yeah. as possible, uh, little mistakes. But yeah, so I got to the point where I have a Ubuntu and I still need to turn on my uh, virtualization and that's that's where I'm at. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that's you're not really going to be able to follow along with anything that we're doing today uh, because of where you're at. Um, okay. But you, 
work with me like if you run into problems with your virtualization get with me tonight uh just message me anytime i'll be around um okay. and we'll get you set up to where you need to be um do you want me to try and do that in my bios during lunch or if you want to do whatever you want to with your lunch time um that that is okay um i would yeah if you want to mess around with that over lunch go ahead um if you want to take a break cool. it's also okay um if you can get as far as uh over lunch if you can get to uh no js in the uh wsl yep i got um, it up. overview yeah if you can get to no js you will be good for the next two units or really actually one unit but um you'd be able to do everything you want the rest can kind of be done at your leisure so okay cool thanks yeah cool uh mike where are you at howdy uh so i have had no problems up to well first of all i should say i'm waiting on a laptop the hospital's buying me a laptop which is good do you remember us talking about that yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. i don't know how much it's gonna be how tough it's gonna be to start over again and learn this for a mac you said it seemed like it was yeah. gonna be pretty quick to Mac it. is um, yeah, Mac is like snappy, snappy fast. Really? Okay. Install fast on and all that. So Windows is not super fast. <laughs> like Windows, you have to like bend it and break it into doing yeah. exactly what you want. Okay. Uh, Mac OS is not like that at all. It's you'll like Mac OS install fest is a breeze compared to this. Wow. So, all right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, for now it's Windows. Uh, so cool. I got all the way to configuring a global Git ignore file. Okay. Cool. And uh that sort of shut me down unfortunately at the top of that it says this step is vital to you getting a job after the uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> if you do not complete these steps exactly it will look extremely bad for uh -huh, a future uh -huh. employer <laughs> and i'm almost certain i effed that up almost immediately but i don't know that's so, okay perhaps i should just check out already it's David. all very I... fixable right now so okay. you're fine um <laughs> yeah. i why don't I pair with you um, in a, I'll get with you later on, probably not this afternoon, but immediately after class, just message me. Yeah, and I'll get okay, with you. great, um, thank you. And we you. can walk through that. Okay. Uh, you should uh, be able to do, it, I would go ahead and continue on through that. If you can finish the GitHub and um, the GitHub Windows Terminal, and no JS steps over lunch, that would be awesome. Um, and it shouldn't necessarily take you too long if you're pot, if you're able to do that. Um, that will get you set up to at least do what we're doing this afternoon. So. Okay, I, I had to skip um, the global git ignore file. But okay. after yep. that, I, I picked everything up and got oh, okay. all the way Perfect. about three fourths through install fest so there's a few things i have to do still but generally i'm having little uh stop signs or potholes but overall it seems to be working i think there okay. might be some user cool. error so that's fine anyway. no no big deal we can work <laughs> okay. through that uh tosin real quick where are you at we've got like a minute here I think you're muted. I'm installing yep. the Visual Studio Code. That's where I'm at. You're at VS Code? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I would just, let's see, where is that in the grand scheme of things? Uh, VS Code. Okay, cool. You should also be pretty good to go for what we're doing this afternoon. Um, right. I'd kind of say the same thing. I said to Mike, if you can, if over lunch, you can get through uh, all the steps down to Node.js, uh, you will be good to go at least for this unit um, right. and everything that we're doing this afternoon and all that. So if you can get that far, I would feel pretty confident. Uh, if you don't get that far over lunch, that's okay. You aren't going, going to be able to follow through everything we're doing uh, after lunch, but um, just you know, keep that in mind. Hello, everyone. Hello. 
Um, I know that was a very brief install fest. Hopefully we went through all of you and at least kind of evaluated where you're at. Um, if you have further issues, absolutely message the three of us um, and let us know how we can possibly help you uh, finish out your install fest. Um, your lab tonight will actually make sure that you've uh, gone through the install fest and you've had everything set up correctly. Um, so that is your first lab tonight. Um, even if you aren't all the way through your install fest, uh, you should still go and complete that lab. Um, it is due tomorrow for one. Uh, so it is a deliverable that you need to turn in. Um, so make sure that you do that. Uh, that also allows us to better evaluate exactly where you're at in your install fest journey. Uh, so that will allow us to help you throughout the week. Um, I will probably be your contact person for most of you actually figuring stuff out with your install fest, because uh, Shazad will be lecturing throughout most of the week. Uh, so I will be pairing with most of you. Um, Hunter will also help out as well, because I'm sure he's very well versed in macOS stuff. So. Um, with that, I want to, unless Shazad, Hunter, you have anything to add, uh, I want to get all of you out to lunch. Cool. Uh, so we will see you back here in one hour. Uh, we'll give you an extra two minutes for lunch. So please be out here at five after. Um, cool. See you all then. <laughs>